Hello, welcome to the third series of the System Design Series for Frontend Engineer. And today we are going to see a very interesting problem which usually come up on the product design interview. So we'll try to design the Netflix. And as you can hear from me, this is the product design. And what is the difference between the system design and the product design in terms of frontend? And when I first stumbled upon this question, um, yeah, I had no understanding uh, what to do actually. So after like questioning some Facebook engineers, uh, so I've collected some information in order to like understand the picture, how actually uh, I need to come up with this uh, design and what, what are the difference, what the interviewer expect, but I'm still not sure. So we're, today we are, go we are going to try and make the product design of the Netflix. And what is the difference? So the product design itself is different from the system design in terms of the features we are looking for. For example, uh, in the previous series for Facebook Newsfeed or uh, Pinterest, we took a look uh, at the like key features of these uh, applications, the infinite scroll and the immense free layout. And we tried to come up with the complete design of this feature. And uh, in terms of Netflix, there is no such like uh, interesting features. And we need to come up with a holistic view on the application instead of uh, the view on the feature, on what, just one feature. So we, we take a look at the whole application and try to design every feature with the most important feature for this application. And usually it's quite hard to understand because uh, this is, there is no like correct question. I, I feel like there is no correct question because you can have an opinion that these features are the most important. And if you say that to the interviewer and you, if you can prove yourself, then that's okay. So yeah, this is quite hard and there is not much information on the internet. So, but we will try to, to go through this together. Okay. So let's look on the Netflix uh, itself, what it actually is. So this is an application where you can search the movies. Oh, uh, I search the movies and also try to, and you can watch these movies. So the movie shows like, uh, so it has the tag and the movie list it has. So, and you can search these movies but by genres. Also, you can try to, to like say that you want to have the Jackie Chan, for example. So, Jackie Chan. And I'm not sure what is the correct. Yeah, and you'll see that the film is actually searched by the J uh, Jackie Chan. And also, you can try to search by the name, for example, sex education. And here you see that you find the TV series. And that's great. Uh, Let's also see the play effect and how the header, and also it has some of the most common uh, genres which you, people usually see, and it also has this fancy preview of this uh, the promo movie, which is actually displayed like in the, almost in the full screen. Um, when we hover on the card, we see that uh, it's actually show us the small beautiful preview, and then we also can click on the more information and get the detailed information, and also. Uh, like if, it ha if it's actually the TV series, it shows the TV series like we had for this whole third. Yeah, like we have here. So let's return to the Trovayo and let's try to design everything. So we've prepared the general plan. We start with the general requirements where we describe the features we'd like to have in our application. And then we go to the functional requirements and, and functional requirements, it's about the platform we are running and some specific stuff about the functionality of our application. Then we go to application architecture and its components. And also we go to the data entities we work with inside our application. And data API, um, data API, it's what API definition we use in order to get our data. Um, then we go to the data store and how we store this data and also we go to the optimization and accessibility stuff. Okay, let's start with the third point. It's actually the general requirements. So what is the general requirements for the application where we watch movies? Of course, this is the search for movie. And how we can search for movie? There are different ways um, to, so let's write the most obvious one. So we can search by actor, by genre, 
and also we can search by name. And this is enough uh, for like basic design. Um, what is the second point? Second point is that uh, um, so we can search for Google and also we can uh, see the short preview of the movie and we can watch the movie. movie. Okay. This is our general requirements, but what about the functional requirements? So the functional requirements is that uh, the Netflix is the quite uh, so this application which is used on wide range devices like uh, TV tablets or, or t oh, sorry, smart TV tablets, desktops, and so on. So we need to support wide range of devices. So this is going to be the TV, then it's going to be the tablets, smartphones, and desktops. So the second point I'd like to also mention is that uh, we need to provide the um, so for example if the user has like the slow internet connection we would like to provide the user at least the possible quality to uh, watch the movie to uh, entertain to have this content so we need to adapt our um, so adapt video to network band We also would like to, uh, so we adapt to the network band. Also, would like, would like to have uh, the previews and the promo movies that should work, should work fine on even on the uh, small on the net, small network connection. This means that, like, when you hover on the card, we should provide the quality which is actually acceptable for the connection. So, uh, so let's say no uh, images promos should be optimized optimized to the viewport and internet band okay so we have I think that's enough for our like functional requirements and let's go to the application architecture so when we start designing the large application like the Netflix, the first thing we usually do is we design, uh, so we make design system. So what is the design system? Yeah, so the design system is a general style guide how to work on the application. And the Netflix is a large application with uh, several pages. And uh, there be can, like several teams can work on this application and they want to have the same experience and same components uh, between all of them. So we define the typography, it's, our, it's actually our fonts, uh, UI primitives like button selects and so on, like grid system we, which is used to lay out everything and the general components, uh, like the, common, the most common one. So we assume that we have this uh, design system for our, our teams and we have the common style gui guidelines when we work on this such application. So the third, the third thing to actually to look at, at is the general pages we have. So Netflix has the three pages. It's a sign up, the main page, and the profile management. So the main page is the page where, so we saw it, it actually the, shows the movie cards where you can go to the you know, concrete movie and watch this. Sign up is one of the most important pages because it's where the user start uh, interaction with the application and the profile page. And it's almost impossible to design every page for this application and we need to focus on the most important one. And for this product design, I'd like to focus on the main page and the sign up. So sign up will appear in the optimization section because it's important that the user gets the, this page like the faster it can and it also interacts with the page as fast as, as you can. So the main page is the main like fe feature rich page. And it has the search, it has the um, ability to watch the movie, so so we focus on these two. And the profile page, it's about the profile management, card management. We can so we mention it here, but we are not going to design this. Okay, and let's start with the our main page. And usually we start with the general mockup. So the general mockup is just a simple like rectangle with the filter. And as we remember, the first thing to do is that we have the header, and the header contains the genre selection. So uh, so this is a generous feature. 
Genre switcher provides us with like switching between the most common uh, genres we define. So I purposely not define like the complete list of this here, but uh, it can be anyone. So let's say we have the latest and my list by default and genre one, genre two will be the most popular one. This can be like TV shows and so on. And we also have the like profile actions. So the profile actions goes here. So what is the profile actions? Uh, profile actions is like where we can search the, for the movie and also we can go to the profile menu, which is, uh, looks like, uh, let's see, maybe I prepared this. Yes, I prepared it. So it go, it's opens the uh, like small menu where we can go to the account and also to the help center. So the account um, go link us to the profile page and this is how we connect the general mockup with that. Uh, okay. From that point, we can also now think about uh, the section below. So what it contains. So as we remember, it contains the promo movie, where like the promo movie of this week or this month, it's actually doesn't matter. So where we can play this movie and uh, see them watch more info, it also will play the playbook for this movie. Okay, uh, what else we have? And the next thing we have here is that uh, we show our, the main page shows the dashboard for the user with the uh, like main genres. So the first one goes like, uh, so this is my list, like the most recommended one. Then we go to the tag two. I call the tag because the tag can be any like entity which we use to filter the film. So it can be an actor, it can be the name, and this can be also like the type of the genre. So for this, we use the like my list and the tag two will be, so for example, TV shows. And basically we show the, uh, the movie card list for that. Okay, um, when we hover on the card, we show the extended information about this. So we also need to place the uh, card itself on, the, on this view. Okay, we have this card and also we'd like to, uh, when we click on the more information, uh, as you can see, we can here rate the movie, add to favorite and then share this movie with the others. But we also have the more information. Uh, it's where we get the, like the full, um, the full flash card. And we also save it. So the full flash card contains uh, the pre also preview same buttons, but also as the description, text, genres, cast, and also provides the episode list. Episode list is uh, like this uh, simple movie card list, but in a different format, where we can switch between the current episodes. Also, we have the box like more like this, with the movie card, which is displayed in the format of the movie. And as you can see, this is our general mockup for the application. And with that, we defined the main features of the this app. So remember, we are focused on the product design, and we do not focus on like the specific wraps which components we seek. But I also recommend you to provide uh, also the dependency graph schema, so uh, we can understand how to how our application is actually structured on the high level. And I feel like it's very hard on the interview to provide all these schemas, especially on the without whiteboard. And it takes a lot of time, so I'm not sure how to handle this. So I have prepared, I have prepared these schemas in advance, and I'm planning to use them on the interview. Um, as you can see, we have the main page, and then uh, we have the header and the page content. So the header contains our generous feature, our header actions, like share and search. And also we have the page content with the promo movie and movie list, and also movie preview and movie card. And this is also has the movie card full and the footer with all these uh, child components. So this is our components hierarchy. And now we understand how actually our application is look like and what is the dependency graph of the uh, our application. But there is one more feature we'd like to mention is that the search. What actually happens when we search the page? On the Netflix, uh, when you search the page, actually the whole, this page is reused. So it has this similar structure let me just copy everything and place it here. So we still have the generous feature. We still have the header actions. What we don't have is that we do not have like the 
from a moving self, we have, we do not have the, okay, sorry. Um, let's clean this up everything, okay. So we have this skeleton page, and then we just have the movie card, movie list without any tags. So we search, we search by some query and then show this uh, movie list in the, f like in the format of the grid. So this can be, let's say this. And also we say that. We can say here that we searched by some uh, Jackie Chan. And we also can say that we can list the suggested tags. So this is the main difference. So we can really use this page, so removing the problem movie, and this is our actually the search page. And with that, we have the holistic view on the whole application, and it's yeah, it's quite like we don't we don't dive deep inside the uh, each properties of uh, the application, but this is the product design, and we need to come up with the, this shallow view, like high level. And with that, let's go to the data entities we'd like to work with, and I will define them here. So let's label it as the general components architecture. And let's design the data entities we work with. I'll copy the text box. Okay, data entities. So which which data entities we'd like to work with? The first thing to do is to define the uh, the movie, what actually it contains. So the movie itself contains the uh, sorry. So it has the definitely has an ID. It also has the preview URL where we have the short preview. So let's say this is the URL. Also we have the mm, description uh, title we can also provide like tags right uh, it has the description so I say this description is an optional parameter because we usually don't get this information like immediately uh, we can also say that we have the episodes So the episode, right? If it's a movie, it has it contains only one episode, for example. If it has a TV series, then we have like several episodes. Oh, okay. So we have the description, we have the episodes, and we have the title. And what else we need? So we also have the rating, which is a number. We also have or accept the rating, we also have the cast, like string array. The cast is actually uh, not the string array, it can be like actor array. So, okay. So this is the description of the movie. And let's say that uh, we define the movie, but we need to define also uh, uh, the episode itself. What is the episode? So basically it contains the ID, it also has the preview, it also has the title, and it also has some tags, uh, descriptions, it doesn't have any episodes, it has a URL where we can watch the movie. So basically it could also have like the multiple uh, URLs, for example, depend, depending on the network connection, we can choose any streaming. So it also has the tags and descriptions and so I'm not sure about the rating itself but uh, we can say it doesn't have any cast because the cast refers to the whole, 
in the whole series. Okay, this is the episode. And what about the actor? So actor is uh, super simple. So actor. Oh, I'd, I'd also like to mention that episode contains the movie ID. So actor basically has the name ID string. Also, it has the full name and it has the per URL to the profile of this actor. What else can we have? Also, when we receive uh, when we receive the data, we'd like to have this in the format of a dashboard. So let's define the response of the future API. So we receive the dashboard map, which is equals to the map where the key is the tag and also uh, and it, it contains the movie array. This is what we receive. Okay, I think we are pretty done here. Uh, let's switch to the data API. So the data API. What we can add for the data API? Basically, this is the get dashboard. It takes the API key as usual. It also takes the user ID we want to receive the dashboard for. And it takes, what, what else can it take? And you know, I feel like this is enough. Mm. Yeah, let's say this is okay. And it returns the dashboard map. So let's uh, also continue to the search, search for movies. So search for movies takes the search, search the text. So it takes the API key. It takes the user ID um, and it returns the like the movie array in the format of card, of course. So, okay, we have the API key and we also have the user ID. Oh, I nearly forgot that we have the query, which is the string. Uh, and we can also add some tags in order to improve our search with some specific stuff. So, we can also take the tags. So tag array, and we also can say that actually we can specify the max page uh, page size. It's a number. Okay, I feel like this is the our main endpoints we'd like to work with, and we when we define the data API, we now can see the whole structure, how we actually uh, define the storage of our application. So for that, let's build the data store. Data store. So we need our schema here, like the dependency tree. And we copy here. And let's remove the, the part we don't need. So. Um, and it turns out that actually we don't need everything here. So I'll copy it again. So this is our dependency tree. And now we need to take into account our store. And let's copy some store schema somewhere. For example, we can take the store schema from, yeah, for example. Okay, we copy the store. So this is our storage. Let's say it like this. And we also have the API. I'll call it just the API box. Okay. So this is our API. Let's give it some color. Okay. So Let's define the fetching points for our application. And for our application, I see the main page as the fetching point. So we uh, request the our so we request our API here to say that we fetch dashboard. 
So we fetch our we fetch the dashboard and then we after the API returns we set this to the store in the normalized format and that's let's design the store. So we have the movie store. Uh, it has the so we can access this by the movie ID and we get the concrete movie information. We can also design that. Uh, so basically, the application usually has one user, and you can. Um, we don't need to like design the user ID uh, movies by user ID, and we can focus also on episode store. So where we can access the episode by the movie ID. So we're accessing actually the episode array. Sorry. So we're accessing the episode array. Let's increase the size of the loop. So what else we can have here? So movie store, episode store, we can also and you know I feel like it's enough for for the movies. Mm, I'm still not sure. Yeah, but I think uh, I think that's enough. So this is our store, and we defined our basic storage here. And now what is happening? So on the page content, we have our dashboard in the format of the tags. Oh, yeah, and of course, we need the store movie by tags. So where the, or we can call it dashboard store where actually we have the structure of the tag ID and the movie list. And we can also like define the search store. And the search store uh, should be not in, I feel like it should be not in normalized form, but we can also provide this uh, normalized form here. It's not, it's, there is no problem with that. So we define the whole API, and on the, page, on the page content, we need to access our store. So on the main, uh, on the page content, we access our storage and get and get the dashboard store. And I feel like I need to have the bidirectional arrow here. So let's say it bidirectional. So we are accessing the dashboard. So uh, the dashboard store, when we access it, uh, passes the uh, whole movie list to the. So we here we pass the movie list, and here our components receive the movie here. And the same goes to the other stuff. And as you can see, we have single page point here. This is our page content. And we can also organize the full fetch information, so the full information about the movie on the side of the uh, movie card. So when we open the um, full movie card, we can fetch the full information. But here we omit this detail, but we mention it. So just to save time on the interview. So we get the full information, and this we receive the the movie also. Okay, and as you can see now, we have uh, all this structure, and we also can say that the search also refers to the API, like with the query. And API should also sh show the search query. And now we have like the structure, how we work with our data in a normalized format, and Let's look at the oh, let's look at the plan. What else we have? So we design the data storage, and then we go to the optimization stuff. So let's proceed to the optimization. So where should I place it? I feel this is a good place. Okay, place here. 
uh, let's call it optimization. So what is the optimization? So optimization refers to the, as usual, to the, current, the, to the three pillars. So this is the network performance, uh, JavaScript performance, and the rendering performance. Okay, so this is our three pillars. And usually this uh, optimization section is almost the same, but for the Netflix, it can be slightly different here. So let's start with, as usual, for with network performance. What we are do, doing first as uh, the, we exit the resources. The, uh, this will give us like 30 or 30, 50% of the network um, traffic benefit. Then we provide the modern brothel format for the browser, which actually support this brothel. This is another 22, 10 to 20%. So, and as the streaming service, we need to understand that uh, HTTP2 is the very important for the Netflix. So we need to serve uh, our application from the server, which supports the HTTP2. Why? Because uh, it has the multiplexing feature. We can stream uh, many resources in parallel, and when, especially when we fetch so many movies, we'd like to. Uh, so we'd like to have the parallel uh, as much parallel connection as we as it, it's possible to have. So I think this is the most important thing in our thing in our application. So okay. Um, Brutal, and here we also define that we need the image for um, more than image from, from image format like FFP for the uh, images. Uh, then we fall back to the PNG. We also want to have our previews not in the video format because the video takes mm, lots of traffic, and we can optimize this by providing gifs. So we can say that use gifs for promos so we use gifs for for promos uh, for promos of our movies what else can we have for a network performance and here we can fetch fetch movie details so we fetch movie details uh, lazily so when we actually uh, open the more information of the, about the movies, then we trigger the fetching like cast information, actors information, some specific tags, and more like this information, and so on. So this uh, will greatly optimize the network performance. Okay. Mm. One more thing here to add is that we need to do active bundle splitting. Mm, bundle splitting. So for the uh, such application, I see several possibilities how we can split the bundle. So this is the vendor code. Like the libraries we have. So we also have the player. Uh, player is actually not always open, so we need to uh, download this player on demand. So when we load this application. So we also have the bundles like profile, uh, sign up and also we can have the bundle for dashboard of the movies so this is all possible bundle tweeting we can have and by loading them lazily we can save lots of space uh, lots of traffic Okay, um, let's go to the, uh, also provide, so uh, we want to optimize our, uh, for the network, we also want to optimize our 
uh, video stream and also the, the images and we need to provide such service so let's say that we have the image video optimizer so image and video optimizer will take the URL like okay we'll have the movie pirate so it passes the uh, URL of the source. It can be the video or this can be the image. And then it returns actually the optimized version of this. We also cover this thing under the CDN and host this from the caching server. So we can also be sure that we serve this from the optimized location to the user. And this will give us the optimized version of the image and the video to the viewport of the user. So we, we can show uh, the user from a mobile phone optimized uh, video with uh, video rate. We can also optimize the images and, and so on. And caching this on CDN will allow us, us to do not to do like uh, the work uh, of optimization if this content is already generated. So we can place it here, yeah, group this one. Let's make the text a bit smaller here. Okay, this is another thing about the performance stuff. Uh, okay, so what else can we have here is that rent, uh, we can switch to the JavaScript performance. And about the JavaScript performance, I could say there are two things to mention as usual. Is the, we need to do less stuff. And we do not want to lock our job with the, uh, some synchronous task, and we need to do do high weight tasks uh, async async. So we need to do this uh, task as synchronously. Okay, let's go. Um, we can use some. I'm not sure that the web workers apply uh, can be applied for the. JavaScript performance on the Netflix site, but we can mention here uh, so so use web workers for high weight task or to some time consuming tasks. Okay, and um, about also the JavaScript performance, we need to so minimi minimize the code. This can be uh, some bundle, uh, bundle optimizers. Uh, we can use that webpack and some many stuff. Okay, the rendering performance is a bit interesting. Uh, for the Netflix, I feel like we can use the SSR. So SSR is a server-side server rendering, and this is the most important thing for the sign-up page. We'd like to decrease the time to first content for the user and time to interaction, so we can uh, provide the uh, SSR uh, page like for sign up uh, without any JavaScript bundles, just a clean HTML. And this will give us the best performance uh, for the sign up page, which is the most important to convert our users. We can also want, we also want to mention that we can use the, so what we can use, we can also inline uh, critical JS and CSS. So. So when we inline, inline this in HTML, then we do not block the rendering process. The resources are already loaded and we have everything on our site. So, and, lo and this means that we can load, load non-critical stuff later. So what is non-critical stuff? This is, can be like an analytic scripts. This can also be the uh, JS code. And also some additional styles. Okay, so what else can we add instead of inlining? So also, uh, I forgot to mention that we can 
for the network performance, we can also say that we can load a uh, use preload tag for for other pages. So the preload text enables us loading preloading the page in advance. So it tells the browser to load some uh, scripts, uh, like had several pages, like profile page, and we could preload the script on the background when the other assets are actually loaded. So we do not block the whole rendering process and we load like this on the background. So about the rendering performance, we can also say that we would like to use the um, CSS naming strategy. As usual, the CSS is naming is very important because as long the longer we select selections we have, and the more problems we have with the browser performance. Uh, so about the rendering performance, we can also say that we need to we want we want to have placeholders for movie card. This will give us uh, this will uh, give the user some visual, visual feedback, so they can uh, uh, so the this will decrease, uh, this will make the user feel that actually the content loads faster than it actually <laughs> loads. Uh, okay, so we have the placeholder for movies, we have the CSS naming strategy. Um, and also, I'd like to mention that uh, we can have uh, uh, make all animation on the paint. Compo composition level. So we do not want to trigger any reflows uh, on our app when we use the card. So basically, the transfer CSS tra transformation are preferred, like the using transform attribute because they are uh, happening in the paint side, and this will not trigger any reflow, and we can have the good performance for, on the browser side. <sighs> okay, um, what else can we have? So let's say that we also want to cache all resources we have. So uh, we can register in the application cache, we can register the service worker, which will cache our scripts, also some uh, CSS, and also the movies data, and some images. So we cache it on the service worker side. And we can also combine this with the efficient browser caching technique. So um, here I'd like to mention that we can use effective browser caching. For example, you tag. Okay. So we discussed the, all this stuff, and now we can also focus on the accessibility. So the accessibility is a quite broad topic, but we can touch this like very fast. So accessibility, I need to copy the text box. So for the Netflix, as I see, we'd like to provide the provide user with subtitles for our movies, so we can show them all the subtitles. And uh, these subtitles should also be accessible by the screen reader. For example, the... Uh, so, other stuff we would like to mention that we want... So, so we want uh, to have color schemas for, blind, for color blindness. We, we want to have the hot piece like uh, navigate between the movies, movies, genres. Uh, we can also have the hot key for search, uh, open the movie, open description. Quick menu and also help, shortcut help. We also want to enforce using RAMs in our application. So we can say that use RAMs in app to provide the consistent experience. So if the user has the different browsers, Zoom browsers, 
setting, then we can follow this setting and Rams will adapt to the this set, uh, browser settings. The five point is uh, announce input fields with the area life attribute. Okay, I feel like this is enough for the Netflix. Uh, what can else we have? Oh, I'd like to add for the optimization that for a smart TV, we can have the different bundle for like U6 bundle. So if the smart TV runs on the Tromium, so we do not worry about any polyfills. We just use the row yes 6 modules and don't worry about anything. So this will decrease the size of the modules itself. So I feel like we done a great job here. It's not that interesting to design like the features uh, which will use different API. And I feel like this takes a lot of time to schema every every stuff and design everything. Uh, but this question is possible in the interview. And yeah, this is how I see it should work. But you know, your comments and suggest suggestions are always welcome. And please um, leave them below. And I also, as usual, provide you with this schema. And so good luck on your interview and have a nice day. So bye and see you in the next video.